try not to remember these <laughs> birthdays anymore. <laughs> So it's rather wounding, but still, there we are. <laughs> still only 74. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's really wonderful to be here tonight. Michael, mm. thank you so much for Pleasure. agreeing um, to be in conversation mm. about some of your favourite paintings. Mm. Um, and choosing these pictures was rather difficult because you have such a great love of the visual arts. And as you are someone who needs no introduction, particularly after that, I should mention, yeah. of course, though, that most recently you've been engaged in some really wonderful arts documentaries mm. for BBC Scotland, um, yeah. including on Hammershoy, on Andrew Wyeth, and most recently of all, Artemisia Gentileschi, yes. yeah. none yeah. of whom actually we've chosen to talk about this evening. No, I've, I've done them. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for me, the problem is the National Gallery is so rich, um, it's very, very difficult to know where you begin to make. I wouldn't say these are my ten top paintings, but they're ten paintings which I cannot avoid when I'm going in the gallery. It always catch my eye, and they always, each one means something to me. And in different ways, presumably, in all the times that you've been looking yes. at them as well, too. Yeah, I mean, I get great excitement from looking at paintings and looking at art, because I think good work is very dramatic. It's very, it lifts you. It's like seeing a little film, but it's all on, on one sort of canvas. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I think there's so, much, so many different experiences you can get from so many different paintings, which is why I've chosen rather a sort of esoteric collection. Yes, and with no further ado, I think we should start by, by, by looking at something rather yeah. than talking about it without it here. And um, this, of course, you'll all know, it's Duccio's Annunciation. It's a tiny, tiny painting shown in extraordinary detail. Mm. You can see it better on the screen here in some ways than you can actually in the gallery. And yeah, Duccio might have been better. appalled actually at mm. looking at it on the screen like yes, this. Yes, no, it's, it's, it, um, a lot of these are very striking. Striking, very much more striking on the screen and they are small and this was I, I was interested because this is just a small panel of what was a big altarpiece wasn't it I mean looks here like a complete that's the complete work but the altarpiece itself which it comes from must be enormous, is it? I mean, well, you, is it, it, is it, does it exist? No, I mean, it, this, this painting comes from a double-sided altarpiece for mm. the high altar in the cathedral in Siena, and a lot of it was dismantled and dismembered in the 18th century, and that's why this picture mm. has ended up here. So why, why, was it, why was it dismantled? They just, you know, they, they decided they didn't... What, was it for religious reasons, or they didn't have enough room, or they were selling it? Well, all, all sorts. I mean, the, the 18th and 19th century is the period where pictures like this, 14th, 15th century pictures, suddenly come out of the context in churches and they become art, really, in a mm. sense, for the first time. I and mean, we're looking at a painting here as a work of art, but it, it wasn't, this wasn't made as a work of art. This no. was made as part of a devotional um, altarpiece, a bit of devotional furniture, really, as it were. And has anyone ever come to you from Siena and say, look, we'd like this back? And is it held in marble time? You know, you've got a bit of our altarpiece. And what would you, what would you say if they did? Well, I think we'd, we'd say, maybe we can lend it to you for a short time. <laughs> Why not? That's, yeah. that's, that, that's always wonderful. But the bits of mm. this, this altarpiece are all over the world. Um, yes. They're in America, they're all over Europe. A lot of them are still in Siena, but not the small pictures. Most of them weren't. Yeah, but what I mean it, in itself, it's a it's a beautiful piece of work. But also, why I chose it is one of the earliest um, paintings you have, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Thirteen hundred or something yes. like that. Yeah. And would, would this, is this Renaissance or pre-Renaissance? Oh, that's a very good question. How oh. on earth do you define these things? Oh, I was going to ask you. <laughs> You're in charge of the painting. Yeah. Well, no, I, I just wonder. I mean, this is on the cusp, is it, or, or not, or is this? I mean, it's quite expressive what's going on. They're not, they're not sort of Byzantine figures looking in a certain patterned direction. Well, Giorgio Vasari, the grandfather or granddaddy, really, of mm. art history, he, he would call these early, early Renaissance. Mm. But if you're a, a scholar of medieval Europe, you'd call them medieval. It really yeah, depends so, on, yeah. on what you fancy. But they're, <laughs> but they're, they're mm. extraordinary. I mean, this is so wonderful with the way it's got the gold, yes. um, the incredible gilded um, background. But yet there's the sense of this being a moment where something is actually happening. Yeah. It's a live moment here. And rather alarming moment when you're told by somebody that you're going to have a baby, but um, <laughs> you haven't got a bloke. It's just going to happen, you know. Because and and God is going. To, God says it's going to happen. That's why you're going to have it. So, I mean, 
Describe the look on her face. Do you think that's going to be interesting? <laughs> I can't imagine what she'd be saying. Yes, or... But isn't she reading the prophecy in Isaiah that says there should be a child shall be born? Is that right? She's supposed to be reading that, yes. Yeah. But actually, here, as in many cases, you can't actually tell what she's reading oh, oh, at right. all. Okay. It's, just, it's just a load of letters. It yeah. doesn't make any, any sense. But I always think, you know, she's remarkably calm. And it's, yeah. it's, in, it's incredible how artists visualise the moment of the Annunciation, mm. actually, yeah. as well. Yeah. Mary is generally unbelievably calm, um, but there's a but there's also a sense there's the open door behind her. There's mm. of course Gabriel coming in. Mm. Um, it's a it's a it's a moment frozen in time, but it's a moment where something is about to happen. Mm. But she doesn't really know what's about to happen yeah. yet, but we do. And was this a bit of a breakthrough painting in terms of how paintings were done, or you know where does this stand in the development of, of sort of painting and oh, expressive painting. I, th I think, I think Duccio and early Sienese painters of the 14th century mm. are extraordinary because they managed to unite um, a sense of real, um, re real, real love for the story, mm. um, real, real me the story means something yes. for them, but at the same time they're using the architectural setting and also the sense of movement for this to be something that's living and yeah. static and I think that's how you were meant to imagine it. This was something that you soul and you were meant to enter into it yes. as well imagine yourself as Mary imagine mm. yourself as as Gabriel so yes it, it is a breakthrough mm. I think yeah. you, you can't not see it as that and very um, um, one thing I wanted to ask I mean always interested who pays for these paintings because presumably that was very expensive I mean all the gilding up there and everything and the color I, I presume the colors was, were expensive at that time the ultramarine or whatever I mean who, who would have paid for this? Well, this was paid for. Um, this was for the, you know, for the guilds for the for the main church in Siena. Okay. Um, and but you know, these these were very expensive objects, but they were much less expensive than making them out of gold. Siena has a great tradition of goldsmithery, of mm. making fabulous objects. A uh, painting like yeah. this is wonderful, but its its fa financial value is still much less than than uh, those, and that's something we forget that, today. That's, uh, that's interesting. So if you had an object made of gold, I mean, that would mean far more to the maker and, uh, and all the exhibitor than perhaps these would. Yeah. Possibly, yes. But what does this picture do for you, Michael? Well, it, it just, I mean, I, I, first of all, I like the sort of, the, the subject is such mm -hmm. a wonderful biblical subject and comes mm. Gabriel and all that. And so it's the moment, but also it's, I think it's just beautiful colours in the, mm. the painting. It's so delicate, the colours and this little urn in front with the, the leaves in there very significant. I'm not quite sure what it means, but that clearly is there to, mm. to mean something. What does that mean? Well, I think it's meant to be the lilies. Um, that, oh, so you know, purity. So it's purity, the, yeah. purity, the purity of Mary. Yes. But you don't need to know really what it means no. um, to, to look at it or to, mm. or to, or to love it. No, but it's, uh, it's significant there, and it's, the, it's the, mm. just the decoration of the painting I like. Mm. And also the fact that you've got this rather wonderful arches and the architecture in the background as well. Mm. But I think it's mainly just the moment. Boom! <laughs> I mean, it's been painted many times, but this is, has a nice simplicity and directness to it. It's not too over the top. No, just just the figures, nothing else. Mm. Sometimes in Annunciations, it's an opportunity for an artist to show everything he can possibly think of. Think of the great Crivelli upstairs, which yes. is another picture we could have we could have chosen. Yes. But it's profusion of yeah. everything, and this there is it's just stripped down. And this is a small painting actually in the gallery, isn't it? Yeah, it uh, is. I realise a number of the, of the ones I've chosen are quite small, so it's rather good to see them here. They're about four times as big as they would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, something else that's small um, but and beautiful, but very different. Though of course oh, it yes. uses gold and blue mm. um, in a, in an interesting comparative mm. way to the Duccio. Is this? Florentine painting of the late 15th century, so we've moved about 150 years. Everything we're showing is in a sort of chrono chronology tonight sort as well. Yes, yeah. mm. Is this picture mm. by, by Baldo Vedetti? Mm. Um, and um, for, for, have you looked at this picture for many years, Michael, or is this you've come something you've come to more recently? No, I, I, I found it very striking the first time I saw it. Mm. There's something about the sort of the, the formality of it, and. and and the face and the look of the, of the, of the mm. woman being painted. Um, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I feel it's a very kind of, kind of strong face, and I'm not quite sure 
um, why it's being painted. Is it being painted for a, you know, a husband or a lover or a suitor or because she's a very rich woman? Mm. Um, but <coughs> the actual, uh, the, the content of the picture itself, it seems very simple. I think that's why I, I, I like it so much. It's just about her face and her mm. upper body and this wonderful design on her, on her sleeve. And, uh, and there's something the way she looks. I just find it, so I have to, there's a kind of directness to it. I mean, you know, mm. I don't mean direct in that she's not Well, she's not, not, looking, she's not looking at no, us at all. No, she isn't looking at us, no. But mm. I kind of feel, so, I, mean, I feel I know her quite well just from seeing her side on like what, that. What do you think about her? I mean, if you feel you know her quite well, what do you think she was, she's like? What do you think she's, she well, was? Well, I, I think she probably, I don't know. I just get the feeling she'd say, all right, I'll sit for another 10 minutes and then I'm, I'm getting <laughs> out of this, please. Have you got it right? I want the nose to look good. <laughs> Can you show it to me? You won't show it to me? Why won't you show it to me? There's something I feel she's there and she just wants to get on with life. She's, she's taken out of her life and for a frozen moment is being painted. I don't know a great deal about her apart from the fact she's obviously very well off, I would imagine. Well, we don't know anything about her at all, actually. Really? Uh, um, I mean, we, 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 we just don't. I mean, that's one of the really curious things mm. about pictures of women. Often, often you only you, you might be able to tell their family mm. um, because of the coats of arms that identify them. Um, but in this case, there's no coat of arms. But as you said, there's this huge, great thing mm. on her on her sleeve. Mm. Um, Which seems so significant. I would yeah. think you'd be able to trace that. Well, we've but tried. We've tried quite hard. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that, I mean, I don't know that there's no other work of the painter that I know. Is he, do you know of a lot of his other work there and what's are, that like? He's, very, he's, a, he's a wonderful painter. There are, there are a number of other pictures by mm. him, particularly in Florence. But uh, what I love about this picture too, and I was really glad you chose it, is its simplicity. Mm. Um, you know, he's, he's using a few materials, he's using a few, um, it's, it's very, it's all, I wouldn't like to use the word geometric, but there's almost mm. something of that in it, isn't yes, there? Yes, yes, it's, it's the composition, is very, very, very clear. And, and also I like the fact it's not, it's a kind of secular painting, that she's not representing the Virgin or Mary Magdalene or no. anything like that. This is a woman in, of her time. Mm. Mm. And she would have been incredibly young. I mean, these poor women, mm. they were married off um, generally about the age of 15 or 16. Mm. And they look, they look so old, they look so mature, but mm. they, were, they, were, they were incredibly immature. They were physically immature as much mm. as anything else. And yet they were meant to just have babies straight away. And most of them died within about a year mm. or so of marriage. We don't, so we don't know who this woman was. Mm. We, don't know her, we don't know her fate. Mm. Um, it's, it's probable that it was, this, was her moment, this was her moment of glory. Mm. But it's not a very flattering picture it either, is it? It isn't very flattering, but that's what I quite like about it. Mm. It doesn't try and pretend that she's the most beautiful person in the world. And she has great beauty, I think, actually, but it's yeah. just not conventional, perhaps, and the way she's looking and her chin juts a bit, but, uh, yeah. It's almost like a Habsburg lip, but something yes, that should be yes, identifying bit, her family. Yes. But is she happy or unhappy? I don't know, actually. I think probably she's a little bit sort of, she's doing her pose and, and being told to go through this. But it's such a wonderful image. It's such a striking image. There's nothing else in the gallery that I think has quite the same sort of immediate impact as this painting on me anyway. No, it's really, it's really, really, really mm. powerful. Yeah. And, and again, it's tiny. Um, it's, a bit it is, bigger, yes. it's a bit bigger than the Ducho, but, but not, yeah. not, not much. And I did notice when I was looking at it the other day, it says it had, it's in its original frame. Yes. So that's about 500 years old. Yeah. And how many are in their original frame? Well, we were just talking about this earlier, mm. and I was trying, I was thinking probably about Ten paintings yeah. um, of the pre-1500 period mm. in this collection. Yeah. I mean, not not very not not mm. very many at all. It suits the frame. That it's not the frame is not too flamboyant. It's not one of those sort of curly whirly, gold leafy things that you kind of see on later 18th century paintings. I think it's rather nice. No, it has a restraint that you that yeah. is really is really pleasing actually mm. with the with the picture. I'm glad it's a bit of a mystery to you as well, <laughs> because it's not quite nice sometimes with paintings. You know, you, you, you've just got your own you know, imaginative take on it mm. and what it might mean, and nobody, everybody else is in a similar, similar way of saying, well, we're not quite sure who she is or what she is. So you don't have to know everything about it to really 
feel the strength and power of the painting, I think. Well, I think that's the glory of the National Gallery's collection. I mean, obviously, our jobs here as curators is to research the collection and to mm. find ways that we can help, you know, everyone to, yes. to look at them. But ultimately, the gallery is also here about pleasure mm. and the pure visual pleasure of, of, of looking yeah. and of, of something that's continued to give mm. pleasure through the centuries. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a visceral thing, I think, looking at art. It's not, mm. you know... It's not something that it should be for any particular class or income group or anything like that. It's just something that gets you. And, and I mean, I hope in the ones I've chosen, one will get that feeling that there's something there each time for everybody. Yeah, and for everyone, that's something that's mm. something quite different. Well, again, we've got something we've got something really quite different. Oh in yes, art. yeah. Tell me about this picture. Um, well, funnily enough, I was put onto this. I had seen it, I think, mm. but. Um, a painter and, and, and um, filmmaker called Derek Jarman. Mm -hmm. Some of you may know Derek Jarman. <laughs> he was, was a marvellously creative man and very um, cultured and well-read, but also quite subversive. And, uh, he, you know, he, he, was, he was not sort of mainstream. Oh, but he um, made amazing films. He made extraordinary films, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, quite long and boring, some of them now. But they actually yeah, had, but they had some no, great they, uh, visual yeah. moments. Had, I saw Caravaggio. Yes. Caravaggio, which is... Um, it is it's, it's a great film, but it's mm. quite. It's, it's just not like any other film. He doesn't sort of. Ha uh, there are no car chases in <laughs> Caravaggio, <laughs> so great, but it does tell you about the painting and how the painting mm. was done and all that. So anyway, he 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 said this was one of his favourite paintings, um, and I quite I, I, I admired his taste. So I yes. came to have a look, and I realised yes, it is an extraordinary painting. Again, mm. there's nothing like this in the gallery. There's nothing like I, nothing like this I've seen anywhere else. It's a sort of you, you know, it's, it's kind of exercise in, in darkness, really. Mm. I mean, there's so much going on, mm. and half of it's in the dark. I mm. mean, there's St John mm. the Baptist is up there mm. somewhere. But also, I don't know, this little child um, radiating. It looks as though, you know, it, it should have something on... It should be clad, at least. It's, it's on cold, <laughs> should have a, a health warning major, on it, but, I think. But it's, the light is radiating mm. off, the, off the child. Mm. Um, and all the angels look like little children. Um, and, and there's things going on in the background, you know, outside the window, the shepherds yes. are, are sort of getting ready. So it's all about playing with light, I think, mm. rather... Um, well, you tell me, is it sort of how deliberate is this and how... I think, I think it's, ex it's extraordinary too because, yeah. I mean, it's so interesting thinking of Derek Jarman and Caravaggio because this is a Caravaggist painting yes. before, you know, two cent well, almost two centuries before, before Caravaggio. Yes, I suppose it is really, isn't it? I hadn't thought of that, the way that just mm. a limited amount of light spotlighting what he wants to show you yes. and the rest sort of things, figures in the background slightly, slightly in the shade. Yes, mm. yeah, yeah. Again, not, not someone we know much about. No, I mean, he's got the craziest name in English. Yeah. Um, it's also fairly crazy when you translate it. It means Little Gerald of the Brotherhood of St John. And that's yeah. all, we, uh, that's yeah. all we know about yeah. him. Oh, we wow. don't, I mean, again, uh, a, a, slightly, a slightly mysterious figure, but, but an extraordinary painting. And this would have been a North European? Yes, yeah. yes. This is in the, in, in the Netherlands. And, I mean, you know, Netherlandish painting of the 15th century is just extraordinary. Extraordinary, it is, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. We, we talked at one point about maybe having a Van Eyck in this, in yes, this but, but, yes, you, yes, but you plumped for, for this. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, well, also, what I mm. like about this is it's a very, very simple portrayal of this great event, the birth of, you know, the, 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 the Christ child and all that. But mm. it's, it's kind of the stable. I mean, there's no, there's no great allegorical figures, there are no sort of swirls or anything around it. It's, it's all very, very simple. It does feel like it's a little manger somewhere. Is that Netherlandish as opposed to the Italians who might have laid on a bit more significance to it? Well, I, I, I don't know. The Italians, mm. the, the, I think that the, this, this taste for really simple mm. naturalistic painting is something which then the Italians admire enormously. Mm. And actually, although we, you know, yeah. traditionally we often thought that Italy was where the Renaissance happened, yes. if you can be so simplistic yeah. mm. about it. I mean, the impact of paintings from Northern Europe is yeah. absolutely fundamental to yes. what happens in Italy yeah. in, the, in, in the 15th century. No, I, I agree with you. I, I love the fact it's so 
it's so simple mm. and it's and, and you can and it's it's taking also it takes a mystical vision St Bridget of Sweden yes. mm. is it's said to have this had this vision of the Christ child oh, right. and okay. that's where this this subject the subject comes from of the light emanating from him oh, right. um, mm. of him yeah. you know the light the light in the darkness mm. there are so many biblical mm. references that you can then pick up with with this but the <coughs> artist makes it mm. believable I've got another painting at home which was in a restaurant in Hong Kong and it's beautiful and it's about it's three women working in the kitchen and they're, they're cooking mm. but it looks like a sort of nativity the way they're looking, the way the light's coming up. Mm. And it's very similar to this. I don't know when it was done, I don't know anything about it. Do you think but the artist just, knew it? Well, yeah, it's so nice. I like the composition mm. of it. I like the way the light comes up. I like the way they're looking down. I mean, they're just looking at a plate of food. We are looking at the, you know, the godchild and all that. But um, it's, it's still, there's a sort of sense of the wonder mm. of the, the angels' faces there, mm. these little sort of... Mm. Children's faces. But not just their faces, also their hands. Yes, I yeah, love yeah. the way yeah. you know the one is holding out his, yes. his hands um, and, and in marble. A lot going on in the you know the side of the painting. Mm. The, the central area is a, for, for, for geez, baby Jesus. Mm. But then you know a lot of it, a lot of the rest is at the, the mm. side of the painting. It's a, you can hardly see it. So would this have been for? Uh, a church, do you think, or the brother? Uh, who, who were the brotherhood of St John that Gerald was? Part well, of? Gerald was part of. Yeah. Well, there were all these brotherhoods um, mm. in medieval, late medieval mm. Europe, in every every city. I mean, lots in England as well in the pre-Reformation times. Yeah. And there yes. were groups of people who came together with a particular devotion, but mm. it was also often a social thing too. Mm. So the picture may have been made for a member of the brotherhood. Yes. It's certainly someone made for someone's private devotion, mm. I think, but also someone who loved looking at painting and yes. who admired the skill of the painter yeah. as much as they admired the, the mm. devotional matter mm. of the subject too. I think that, yeah. really, that really shines through. Yes. Yes, you're right. The hands are very good. Her hands too mm. are sort of um, where they're held yeah. together there. Yes, it's a very composed picture as, as well. Mm. Maybe that's the, the, the three pictures that we've looked at, if they have anything in common so far, they do seem to suggest that you like things that are very composed and, and, very, and very ordered. Do you think that's mm. fair? Or if we look at the next one, yeah. that maybe suggests yes, that yes, as well. You, you, well, maybe we're finding this out as we go through. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm just saying these are paintings that I find arresting and I go and look at them each time. And maybe this, yes, they're all pale in sort of ainly fixated sort of uh, <laughs> uh, taste and all that. They're very meticulous, all of these pictures, actually. particularly, I chose, yes. I, I love the painting, and, and I mean, it's, but it's a subject you see a lot of St. Jerome in his study. But I spend a lot of time at a desk, you know, sort of mm. reading books and all that sort of thing, and trying to stay awake. And um, I just love this, I, I, I respond to this, because it mm. is rather neat, and, mm. and I love the sort of, uh, well, I like the little study itself. Would you like a study there. like that? Yeah, it looks, <laughs> it looks like it ought to be on wheels, you know, and it's kind of, you can move it around to different rooms in the house. Well, some um, years ago, I believe there was a New Zealand architect who designed oh, really? a little sort of study cubicle based on this. Ah, okay. um, and I think, I th you know, that you could buy as a flat pack and well, assemble in your no, own. please. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old St Jerome, he didn't have flat packs, but it is quite... It, I quite like the way it's sort of organised, little shelves there. And it's got, a, it's got a very, an angled reading position, which mm. is very, very good. You know, I used to have, I, I worked a flat desk mm -hmm. and was sitting like that. And I've now got some, a little sort of stand which, which you know, angles the books up at me. It's much better for you. Just um, like a medieval saint. Yes, well, I... <laughs> <laughs> medieval, but I'm not a saint. But, uh, um, uh, and also what I like mm. is, is particularly about this is the, the, the fact you've got the rather intimate sort of interior and mm. beyond it the natural world, you know, <laughs> birds up in the sky and beautiful views out there. I mean, mm. it's kind of the most wonderful place to work and write. When um, you work, do you like to work in somewhere where you can see or hear yes. the world, the world outside? Well, I, I do like to look out, mm. yeah. No, I, I mean, I've got a house in North London which is quite, mm. I mean, it's quite a, a lot of it in a very built-up area, but mm. my house looks out over a row of gardens, so I can actually mm. see greenery all the time and the birds and all that, which I love. And mm. so I can respond to that very much, that he might get up every now and then, go down his little steps and go out to one of the windows and just see what's outside, see the wild mm. birds and all that. And it just seems the most perfect 
place to work. But you don't presumably have a lion padding carefully like the one in the in the in the background there. No, no, I, I well, be useful. I think sometimes it'd be very useful. Go and answer the door. When people Pick come up the, to the door. Hello, we're from the social. Media. Oh my God! Yeah. Very nice to have a pet lion. Yes, the lion is there. That's part of. Uh, the legend, isn't it, of St. Jerome? That, yeah. That, or is it, was it him who took the thorn out it's of the lion? Exactly. Yeah. Jerome yes. takes the thorn out of this, the paw of this lion, and the lion is so devoted to him that he follows him yes. then, like yeah. a dog, for the, yeah. rest of, the rest of his Which life. It could be a bit irritating sometimes. I, mean, I think so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's fine. Just, just, I'm just going out. I've got a friend in. Oh. No, no, you, don't, you can't come along. <laughs> I think Antonello's thought about that. That's why he's in the background. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, and, and also, uh, are these mm. symbolic? Um, I always think paint. Do you think they're, do you think they're symbolic? symbolic. Um, I don't. Well, I, I, I think they probably are, which is mm. why I ask mm. the question. Uh, because mm. I think they're because they're so significant. There, do they mean anything particularly? I mean, does a peacock mean something? Does a I don't know what that is, really. Well, so. there's been a lot of discussion yeah. as to what that other bird is. Yeah. Um, it, people have liked to think it's a partridge, but I'm afraid our ornithological knowledge at the National Gallery is probably not what it should be. So oh. maybe some of you can help us here yeah. in yeah. actually working out what this bird yeah. complete, completely is. Mm -hmm. um, if it is a partridge, it does have a particular symbolism, as does the peacock, and that would that would fit. So the peacock. What, what does it have? What's the well, significance I mean, of I the peacock? I mean, I think it's sometimes start. been said that the peacock, of course, with its wonderful plumage and its tail it's mm. about worldly glory um, and about you know not not having that um, mm. when you're going into a study like like yeah. Jerome and the partridge is meant to be I think um, a contemplative bird you often see partridges in representations of studies actually with uh, okay. Jerome oh, but right. I'm just not sure that partridge is quite right okay well, it's clearly he thought it was right he put it in there very he, deliberately he did he? it's right in the foreground he did yeah. but whether it's whether it's that bird but I also love the bowl in the yes. in, in there yes yeah is that for the a peacock, do you think? I think it might be for yeah. the peacock or yes. for the lion when, yeah. it's, when it, when it gets bored, it, it, could, it yeah. could come there. <laughs> but I also love about this picture, mm. I don't know if it's something you like too, the fact that it's, a, it's in this wonderful yes. architectural mm. setting, yeah. and yet it's, a, it's, it's as if you could almost walk into it. Yes. Um, you're invited mm. so much yeah. in. This is not a study where you are kept out. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite interested in the architecture in these paintings, like in the mm. Duccio, the first yes. one. I was, I was interested in those arches and what they're represent mm. and clearly they're very important to have that sort of framework mm. um, and this is beautiful isn't it really it's some gothic it looks like at the end of a sort of partly a castle partly a church partly a huge sort of monastery or something I don't know quite what it is and what it's based on but there's a great feeling of space out beyond it Yes. Beyond his little room, there's things going on out there. There is, but it's also, I love the idea that at the centre of this great expansive space, this world, mm. it all emanates from the, from, from the study. Yeah. And Jerome, who of course is the, the saint who translates yes, the Bible course, yes, into yeah. Latin, so yes. the way in which it's yeah. spread throughout yeah. medieval Europe. So it's really in some ways the cornerstone, I suppose, of the yeah. medieval church. Yeah. And I like the idea that you have the representation of the saint you know, under in this great architectural setting, yes. like, like like a church, making yeah. making that point. But doing perhaps. something so sort of epoch making as, yes. as translating the Bible into Latin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's so fundamental, but then I spent, I wasted an awful lot of time a few years ago trying to work out what architectural context this might have been, mm. and I went round lots of churches I knew in mm. Sicily, in mm. Naples, places where Antonello... Nice job. It was a nice job. Yeah. It was, I didn't, the gallery yeah. didn't pay for that. That was my holiday. Oh, my wow. children were wow. very bored. They were really fed up. Shocking. They didn't want to hear anything more about Antonello. <laughs> but we couldn't, un but no, there was no, there was no nothing way of, nothing that to, absolutely yeah. corresponded. Maybe it's just a sort of, it, it's a, a mix of all the various different things he likes. I mean, that corridor there, with, which has got the arches, uh, and this one has no arches at all, but there's mm. a couple of rather nice little window seats. Mm. It's like he's taken lots of little places he went on holiday. <laughs> and, uh, if, if they did go on holiday in those days, I don't know. Well, they certainly travelled. together. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he's yeah. such a fascinating artist. I mean, he's from the southern, southern Italy. He's from okay. Sicily. Yes. And he paints this picture, we're absolutely yeah. certain, in Venice. Um, okay. In the in the mid 1470s, mm. and so he. But he's also really interested in Netherlandish painting. I mean, mm. the the painting we looked at before. That's yeah. just the sort of thing he would yes. have loved. Yeah.
and my former colleague Lauren Campbell, who was always so damning about how Italian artists might have tried to paint in a Netherlandish mm. style. They're beautiful little figures. I don't know if you've noticed in a boat mm. um, just at the back of the picture. Yes, yeah. He always used yes. to say that in a, you know, an Italian artist like Antonello couldn't really paint these properly. Um, but if it had been Memling or Van Eyck, you would have Oof. really understood yeah. them. But yeah. but the Italians were just a bit lazy yeah, and just, didn't, um, didn't really yeah, do it properly. Well, yeah. He's, he's certainly got the light and the shadows right mm. done rather well, hasn't it? Sort of, yeah. Yes. And I love the tiles as well, don't you? Yes, in, yes. Yeah. They're, they're, they're beautiful. Any, any news on that? Any no, views? No, no news on no, that. No, I, no, no, no. no. I, think, I think you it can go It looks like far. everything was very carefully chosen to be yes. there. That's what I feel about that painting. It's mm. not just a man in a study. It's showing off in meticulous detail all the various bits and pieces that he wants to show us. And he wants to show us about his life, what's important to him too, yes. as well. You know, all these different objects in, yes. their, in their order and disorder. I love yeah. the fact that the, you know, things are about to fall off the shelf, um, yes. although it's all very, is, very ordered. Yes, but that's quite good. I like that. It does not too neat. It's not too tidy. I mean, there's real books leading up there. And it's a kind of got, come right through the ages, that. I, mm. I can relate to that now. Mm. Think of Saint Jerome there. Mm. Not quite sure what he's got in front of him. Well, he's got a book. It looks like a toilet to me. <laughs> but I'm sure it can't be. No, it can't be. <laughs> <laughs> on the floor, just in on front the floor, of his, yeah. he's, he's got a lovely little plant. He's got a cat there. He's, he's got a cat. cat. Yes, yes. It's a cat. Oh, marvelous! Yeah, it's a marvelous cat. Yeah. Um, the cats and dogs, the cats and the yeah. lion and the birds not fighting. So again, I think a sense of yes. harmony, perhaps. That's right. Yes, yeah. order. There we are. Back to right. <laughs> back to order. My, my. But this is a this is, would be a lovely Good place to, to live and spend time. Yes. But I can't say that this oh, would wow. be a lovely yeah. place to, yeah. <laughs> to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think this gets rid of the order, yeah. order idea in your mind, I Michael. remember that Erica Langmuir, who mm. uh, put together the wonderful catalogue of paintings here, described this as the most frankly erotic painting in the, uh, in the collection. <laughs> and, I mean, it is quite striking. I mean, it's supposed to be well, sort of the perils of... The perils, uh, per of, perils of, yes. of lust or whatever. Yes. They've all got, all got a moral, these paintings. But why, why I particularly chose this, I should mm. just say that, get it out of the way, is that this... Here, that is the python foot, which comes down at the beginning of the Monty Python show. And Terry Gilliam nicked that from Bronzino. And as far as I know, Bronzino has not a penny in royalties. Um, the National Gallery should have, got, the, should have got yeah, the royalties, well, actually. Well, that's Too a, late. Yeah, the National Gallery should be absolutely right. But that is the foot, so that's why mm. I was interested. I and mean, it's very much Terry Gilliam world, you know, all sorts mm -hmm. of things going on, people being very naughty and then people being very angry about them being naughty and people looking very tired at the top and uh, holding his head in his hands and we don't know quite... Well, I don't know quite what all that no, is Erica, about. Erica suggested that he might be syphilis. He might be a representation of syphilis, oh, that yeah. figure, mm. which had, you know, just struck um, Europe from from the. It was one of the one of the m one of the horrible things that came from the New World. We gave lots of horrible things to the people of the New World, and this was yeah. something that came back. Oh really? Oh, that's, that's what that. Well, that's what she. That's what be, she yeah, and other peril, other people considered. The perils of, of the perils the, of, I mean, of yes. lust. Yes. Um, and, and otherwise it's sort of, uh, and the figure, again, it's a very theatrical painting, this. Mm. He's holding a, a sort of drape behind them, almost mm. like a back cloth, mm. uh, the figure at the top. Who's he, the sort of wonderful fellow? Yes, looks he's... like he might be a general of the German <laughs> First World War, but clearly not. <laughs> he's got um, an incredible moustache and great, beard, hasn't great he? Great facial hair, yeah. terrific <laughs> facial hair. So obviously... Probably somebody the, the artist knew. Would you imagine quite, that? Quite possibly, yes. Mm. Um, Bronzy, I mean, that's what artists do, is, don't they? Yeah. I mean, they, they paint people they know and they give them yeah. fabulous. I mean, he's, he's meant to be Father Time in this picture, oh, I, I think. See. Yeah, yeah. Can you see there's the, there's the hourglass um, behind yeah. him and his wings? Um, so he's saying that this is all going to come to an end one day. Yes. He does strike me a bit like, you know, disgusted of Tunbridge Wells, you know. <laughs> It's absolutely shocking. Put some clothes on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to stop this, and I'm going to complain to the BBC straight away. <laughs> but then he's also saying, I'm just going to have another look too oh, before, yes, I, before I do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the skill of the painter here, Bronzino. Obviously, well, I, from what I know, he was painting this for very wealthy patrons. And this is not a simple paint. This is to show off, sort of whatever it is, some sort of. Uh, <clears throat> 
allegory of, I know. of, of but I think you can, rich, rich, I think you can, you can overstate those a bit because obviously it is all that and you can pick out mm. the various elements. But as you were saying, the thing that really grabs you about this picture when you see it mm. are the two figures in the, in, in the, in the foreground. Yes, and yeah. what on earth, you know, what, 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 well, we know what they're doing, yeah, um, but, yeah. but why, well, why are they doing that? Yeah. A mother and son, why are they doing that? Yeah. Well, the gods were allowed to do that, weren't they? I mean, well, yes, they had, they had every license. It didn't really worry them much. But, uh, and also, I like the figure on the other side who <coughs> is about to throw rose petals on them. Mm -hmm. I mean, he looks really wonderfully naughty, kind of. I'm going to have some fun here. Oh, 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 I see what you're doing. I know what you're up to. Here come the petals and all that. So it's got quite a lot of joy in it, but it is, there is a dark side, there's as you a really, say. There's a really dark side. And then yeah. behind that joyful figure about to scatter roses is the most strange-looking girl. Um, oh, because yes. you look, yes. you think that's a beautiful girl's face. <clears throat> it looks like <clears throat> princesses yeah. of the Medici yeah. family who Bronzino mm. often painted because he was the Medici's court artist. But then you look and you see she's got a tail um, she's got the strangest oh, right. and, that's and all part of her yeah. Yeah. yeah so she's 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 a she's <coughs> envy i think supposedly um, <coughs> yeah what she got in her hand what she got in her is hand is it a rotten apple i mean you've got the golden apple venus has got the golden apple well, in, I'm, no, I'm not sure what she has in one hand. In another hand, she has a snake, I think, yeah, as well. Yeah. It's really, you know, as you say, this picture is all, it looks wonderful. Yeah. It looks beautiful and, and perfect. And it's all just a little bit nasty, like the, the apple that has, a, has, a, has, a, has something wrong in it. And, and it, would, it, would this have been shocking to people at the time? Or, I think it would have been incredibly shocking to people. Yeah, okay, but it wouldn't, yes. have been, it wouldn't have been seen. I mean, this was a picture for you know, for very, very limited. It's not quite a dirty picture, mm. but it's a picture that not many people would have would have would have looked at. Right. But yeah. here, of course, we show it in yes. the galleries for everybody, everybody yeah. to see. Yeah, yeah, and 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 quite rightly, people like Terry Gilliams and Nick bits off it. But uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is. So it was a clever painting. It was very the, the mm. illusions were quite sophisticated and all that. Was saying, you know, mm. only certain people could see this sort of thing. Mm. Do you ever get complaints in the gallery? People saying. Shocking. Oh, yes. This should be taken away. Do you? Um, well, this was this was a picture that I think when it was first when it was first shown in the nineteenth century, there were lots and lots of complaints about it. Yeah. Um, indeed, this in a painting by Garofalo, which probably most of you don't know because he's not an artist who's celebrated today. Mm. It's a painting of two lovers cavorting in a landscape, mm. and there was lots of discussion about this was these were not things to be shown in yeah. a public place like the yes. like the National Gallery. Yeah. The yeah. effect it could have on morals would yeah. be would be quite disturbing. Yeah. I'm I'm always, I'm always amused by that. You know, mm. you can see in, in, in galleries mm. people in various stages of nudity doing all sorts of things. Which I mean, were this shown anywhere else, I mean, they would get people would demand the place to be closed down. <laughs> and newspapers would have to be uh, issue an apology. <laughs> it's just kind of crazy, but rather good that you do have things like this and, and that you do show it. And yeah. I think there's, I think that's a, it's a it's a very bold <laughs> and, and and kind of. Very powerful painting, yeah. really, in its way. It's a yeah. really popular yeah. painting, too. But I'm painfully aware that we've Sorry. only got oh, to yes. about painting five. Oh, gosh, yes. I know. <laughs> we've still got some to go. Yeah. And the ambassadors, yeah. I mean, has to be one of pretty much everybody's favourite painting in, yes. the, in the National Gallery. What are your reasons for, for, for loving it? Uh, well, partly because, I mean, just the size and scale mm. of it. And, and there's a lot going on there. And... Um, the definitely interest in the world, and you feel this is the the beginning of a of a of a, of a sort of in, a kind of spirit of international sort of inquiry, the globe and everything like that. The fact mm. that there's two globes up there, these two ambassadors who have come to England from from mm. France and all that, and in a, in a sense you feel these two young men have the world at their feet. You know, mm. and they're incredibly is, arrogant. Yeah, well, I suppose they are. Yes, yeah. I mean they're. Looks like so sort of stands like Henry VIII, doesn't yes. he? Really, yes. These, these huge, this huge sort of mm. trunk and, and chest mm. and all that sort of thing. Um, but I, but it's also the detail in it I find mm. interesting. Mm. Um, 
why is that all there? Again, it's like going back to St. Jerome. There must be a reason for all these things being there. But it's definitely a feeling these are the whiz kids of their time, you know, mm. Lords of the Universe, whatever. I mean, mm. they were quite young, weren't they? I mean, I think they're in their 20s. They're incredibly young. Yeah. And one of them is an ambassador and one of them is a bishop. Yes. <laughs> they've yes, already done, right. they've yeah. done, He's they've done so already. much. Yeah. yeah, for quite, yeah. A, quite a few years. Um, and I, so I, I'm interested mm. in, in actually what's there. Mm. And the period it depicts and the fact that it's a, mm. it's a kind of a bit about the birth of geography or whatever geography yes. angle in it. but then i'm also fascinated as to what is going on with the skull in the foreground and all that and mm. is it just saying these are two glorious men or is it is there a sort of moral to it that that you know all things shall pass is it mm. something like that well, I mean, this picture makes you think of that, really, doesn't it? Because you've got all the glory of the worldly mm. goods, of their power, of their prestige, mm. of their sophistication in, in every type of mm. fashion, um, but yet you've got the skull, yeah. and you've also got the little crucifix um, at the top, just uh, at yes. the top, that just pokes right, through. Right, yes, I can see that. Well, now, that must have been very deliberately done, because it's mm. almost behind the curtain, isn't it? It just is. Just a reminder. Yes. Yeah. All flesh is grass. Uh, yes. 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 Uh, earthly achievements mean nothing really mm. without the, the, so mm. it's a bit of a religious painting. There's an element of that, and mm. the, and of course this was that. Uh, I mean, it's a very skillful bit of perspective changing. Mm. And if you go to full on, you can't see it. You go to one side, you suddenly see yes, it's a skull. Yeah. Yes. That, a, that was that was quite a coup for Holbein. Wasn't oh, he's it? yeah. I mean, he's must have been very pleased with that. I think he probably was very pleased yeah. with that, and rightly and rightly so. Yes. it's it's just it's just astonishing. Yeah, yeah, and, and very bold. So it must mm. have been very you know very significant part of the painting. The significance mm. of this is an important part of the painting. And who mm. was the painting done for? Well, it's done for one of the one oh, of the right. young men. Oh, right. And okay. it's in his it's 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 displayed in his family house in right. France. So yeah. it it go it goes there and then from there it comes back to England. And it but it's just always been one of the most loved pictures in yeah. the in the National Gallery's collection. It speaks to different different generations yes. in different ways. Yeah. And again, it's beautiful. It's beautifully painted. The colours are extraordinary, mm. aren't they? The richness mm. of the colours, the green background, and the loot. Significance of the loot was it just that one has the feeling they've got all the gadgets, <laughs> all the modern gadgets there, everything they want, you know, and the books and 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 it's sort of the equivalent of what you know, iPhone 12 or whatever people would have now. Well, we've got one of these. Oh, yeah. I've, I've got a feeling of that. We've got all this. This is what we've got. Yes. Uh, so that was why I was interested in asking who it was painted for. So it was painted for them. Mm. They would say, "What's the skull doing there? You know, why can't it just be me and my friend looking, looking sort no, of?" No, it's interesting because although they're they're at this this showing yes. off, they're also thinking yes. about their mortality yeah. and their and, and their lives. Yeah. So it's more than that. It's more yeah. than just the worldly show, yeah. and yeah. that's what makes this picture so sophisticated and yeah. and and really really rich. Well, as someone who's just turned seventy four today, I'm rather pleased to see people in their twenties worrying about mortality. <laughs> <laughs> Gives me a good nice bit of a buzz. Yeah, you'll get there one day. <laughs> no, they know his look as if they've mm. done that. Um, oh yeah, I yo, love this. He's I wonderful. Really like isn't this. He? I think Moroni's yeah. work is absolutely terrific. Mm. Um, it's just such a modern figure that, mm. and, and there's something really lovely about that. It's the way mm. the look, you know, and mm. it's also it's not a grand figure. No, he's he's an, you know he's a craftsman <coughs> rather than a lord or anything like that, and yet treated with great dignity. Mm. You know, he's 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 a tailor. Mm. And I don't know what tailors, how tailors were seen at that time, but basically they're they were, <coughs> they were, they were, they were they're artisans who yeah. make things for rich people. Yes. And I just love the fact he's got it's very simple. He's mm. got his scissors and he's got the cloth, and it's as though we're in the shop, you know, saying, well, mm. and he's saying, what, what do you, what do you really want, you know, or something like that. So I just think there's a lot in in there. No, it's it's a it's a wonderful simple simple portrait mm. and he was I mean out, there's so many great paintings by Moroni in the National Gallery's collection because mm. he was just adored in the 19th century oh, really? and he's yeah. someone that we we look at much less yeah. today than yeah. we than we ought to but I I like the ooh that greeted this picture coming yes. up it's clear yeah. that a lot of you yeah. feel the same way about it yes presumably that happens you have taste does change over the years doesn't it I mean 
I'm thinking of Vermeer, you know, for a long time people didn't rate Vermeer much at all. No, they and didn't. And now, of course, that each one is precious. I mean, how yeah. does that happen? Well, it's a whole lot of chance. I mean, this is another painter who, uh, again, yes. people didn't rate for a long yeah. time and now they, now they yeah. really, really do. Do they? Yeah, yes, I, I mean, they this do. is great just because it's the garment that he's wearing and mm. the way it's, you know, mm. it's, it's, it's uh, you know, holes in the sleeve and all that sort of thing. And it's just... I just love it because it's a kind of mm. feeling of intensity. And you mm. come across this painting with all, you know, sort of naked bodies around and gods and all that sort of thing. And here's this figure there saying, no, no, just give me a moment or two, you know. I'm going to commune with God directly. And there's just that feeling of, mm. of a striking, quiet moment. Very mm. powerful. Mm. And I don't know much about Zubaran. He was, he, he did portraits as He's well. He's from Seville. He? Um, oh, yeah. He's mm. a, I mean, in his, you know, he knows Velasquez in his, in his youth. I mean, yeah. he's a, he's a painter who works for, who, who I mean, that works in that wonderful city yes. for most of his, most of his career. Yeah. And he paints religious subjects mainly. I but, mean, and again, I'm sorry to bang on about this, but it's always interesting. Who would have commissioned this? Would this have been a, an order of? Some church order, or well, would it, it been for a, would it been for a church? Well, it's thought that it may have been for it may, may have been for for a monk or for a monastic order. Yeah, Franciscan. Um, yeah, order, but I mean, yeah. it's 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 wonderful. I mean, the I I love the detail of his you know his raggedness, yes, the fact yes, that he's wearing right, yeah. a garment, his yeah. you know it's 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 worn through at the elbow. Yeah, and also the the face inside the hood, you know, you mm. just really can't you can barely see the eyes, mm. just got the nose there, but it's it's that intensity. And you've got St. Jerome in his study having rather a nice time with all things around him. This man has got nothing there. It's so simple and so bad, mm. just him kneeling. Mm. Um, mm. So in, the, in, in, in nowhere at all. No, mm. it's a, it's, and it's very, you know, it's the colours are so simple in this yeah. picture. And now for something totally, oh, yes, totally yes, different. Yeah. Well, this is just, I love these because of the, you know, you know it's, the, it's wonderful satirical painting. Mm. And it's, it's just showing being, you know, people behaving very, very badly <laughs> um, because they're, but they've got money and they've got all this, but they're just um, losing it and abusing it and all that. And I just think it's a great, there's so many wonderful details in it as a sort of satire. Um, and presumably, I don't know, was Hogarth a great painter or was he, I mean... What do you think? I mean, he's a great, he's a great designer, I isn't he? I think a great he? designer. Yeah. I don't think, I think he knows what he wants to do, but I, mm. I mean, what I like about this is the life in all these, there's four or five of them, are there? there the are, yeah, there's, oh, there's six, perhaps. I can six. never quite remember. Yeah, mm. it's just the five life in them and all that. And, mm. you know, you've seen grand paintings and very well composed paintings mm. of people looking rather wonderful. And this is just sort of mess. I mean, this lovely... Well, you tell them what, well, it, what it, the it, story's about. It's oh, I don't know. The story is so terrible, isn't it? I mean, of this poor young girl, An rich young marriage, girl, he's yeah. made to marry um, the dissolute son of an earl. Um, so, you know, the, his family gets money and she gets the name and it's the most unbelievably unhappy marriage and it ends up with um, her, you know, her dying and mm. it, it's, it's, just, it's just awful. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a tragic comedy, really, yeah. except there's much less comedy. Though You see some of it here, but yeah. it's... So it's a real tragedy. But it was around about that sort of time that Fielding was writing his books as well, you know. Exactly. And the kind of people were showing the dark side of, mm. of life at that, that, of that mm. time, you know, mm. behind the grandeur was dirt and, you know, sort of gropings and, and drunkenness and all that sort of stuff. What I like in this one particularly is that they're just... It's such a grand room, mm. which we've seen plenty of grand rooms like that, but they've just, it's just a mess. They have a total mm. mess on the floor and all that sort of thing, the, over, the overturned chair and all that. You just don't see that in painting very much. And here, I don't know what's going on, you know, the sort of one who looks like Rowan Atkinson on the... Um, on the yeah, side singing, of singing his yes. heart out. Yeah, it does yeah. look like Rowan doing his stuff. Mm. And, and can you tell me the significance of the sort of the ornaments on the <laughs> on the mantelpiece there and in the corner there? We were, some we really were, pretty awful looking ornaments. They're terrible looking things. Mm. We were, I think this is Hogarth having a joke because they're meant to be very valuable things and some oh, of right. them are. Yeah. But the ones particularly on the mantelpiece at the top, do you see the figures with the hands put out? Yes. I mean, that's just yeah. Hogarth's joke. That's yes, what I love about like Hogarth too. It's a wacky figure you yeah. might get. Yeah. It's like a clown. Yeah. He just, and he also just they've has got, them in. Um, there's the, above the clock, there's mm. a fish which 
which looks yes. you know, fairly classical, and the cat <laughs> sitting on top of the clock. You know, it's just, <laughs> is that a comment on taste, you know, just saying these people got absolutely no taste at all. They've got money, they've got nothing. Yeah. But it's also, but the, the great thing about these paintings is that there's just more you look every time you see. There's yes. some detail you, you hadn't yeah. noticed before. You can come back again and again. Yeah. Oh, and all Hogarth's work is like that, you mm. know, all the rakes, progress and all mm. that. And they're meant to be that way. It's mm. you're meant to be lots of little things, I suppose, which, which, I mean, I'm not saying it's like, it's the spirit of Monty Python, because when we yes. did Monty Python, we made sure that in every single shot there was some bit of detail that perhaps mm. you wouldn't notice immediately. I mean, we had, a, I remember, a, a suburban house, perfectly ordinary, except on the wall with just joints of meat. Like art sort of hanging there, you know, and a bit of and just there were only a few of them. You wouldn't notice it the first time. The second time, you perhaps notice it. Is that meat on the wall? Is that a joint of beef hanging on the wall? And I quite like that, throwing things in and, and asking people to come and look at it a mm. second time, giving them the feeling that if you investigate, you're going to get some more satisfaction out of it. Well, so I'm, this can you can look at many times. You can, and it's part of that wonderful English tradition of the absurd, isn't it, really, yes, as yes. well? We've got two more laughing pictures. Laughing at ourselves, which we are very <laughs> good at. Laughing at ourselves, and, and, we are extremely yes, good at. There's a lot to laugh at, but I'm glad that we do. <laughs> yeah. this, okay. is, this is something probably very different. This is not wow. to laugh at. Yes. <laughs> well, it is very different, but mm. I find his painting it's a bit like Hammersoy, a Danish mm. painter I, I worked with. Um, they've got terrific power mm. um, and uh, the way he just, you immediately want to sort of mm. get a, put a scarf on and put a coat on just because you feel the cold and also you're not quite sure what's, what's going on. This little boy who's thrown his crutches off and is seeing the crucifix in the, mm. in the trees and beyond it this a uh, misty sort of cathedral or whatever it is. Yeah, know, just mirror, mirror image of the trees. Mm. And, of course, German romantic art, which I think is mm. something we didn't really have much of in this in this country, did we? Is no, any... we, ca we came to it very, very late. Yeah. I mean, this picture was bought um, just about 30 years ago was by it? the National Gallery. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so little of these extraordinary pictures. Yeah. If, you go yeah. to, if you go to any of the great provincial German galleries, you, yeah. see, you see them. I mean, Friedrich is so marvellous. Yes, he is. And the, the huge, strong images of, mm. of landscape, also always with something going on rather strange. I mean, he's obviously a sort of... It's a, yeah, um, you, you know, it's a fantasy, it's a romantic mm. world mm. in which the boy gets cured and sees Jesus in the trees and all that sort of thing. So you get something more than just a landscape. Mm. You get some feeling of longing or regret mm. or hope or inspiration in all these things. Mm. There's a wonderful painting of um, um, a ship caught in the ice, which he mm. did at one time. Mm. And it's just the best picture I've ever seen. I've seen lots of pictures of ships in ice, but it's, it's the icebergs have completely sort of taken over. The ice has mm. taken over and just bits of ship and bodies sticking out here and there. He was just great at doing ice and snow and cold mm. and, you know, bleakness mm. and this the power and strength of... Of, of nature. Of nature. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, he's, he, he, he really is. Yes. He conveys it like nobody else. Yeah. But talking of ships reminds me that we were going to end tonight with one of the greatest pictures of, yes. a, of, of yes. a ship. Ah, yes, yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, I actually originally chose this because um, mm. it was the one of two paintings we had at home. I mm. mean, of <laughs> this particular one. <laughs> You didn't uh, steal it from well, the National yeah. Gallery. Uh, night reproduction. Mm. My parents didn't have much art, mm. um, but they had the fighting Temeraire, and um, I, I remember just looking at it, trying to sort of work it out. And because I don't know, I felt at one time it's art, therefore, you know, well, yeah, it's a very interesting few colours and all that. Now I find I know much more about it, and I know more, more about the period, mm. and I just know more about Turner, who I think is the most brilliant mm. artist, probably, of all the ones we've shown today in a sense yeah, and this is a terrific piece of work because it's a, it's just about that period where steam was beginning to come in and steam and the old steam, sailing yeah. ships are no longer needed mm. and there's the temeraire which was mm. a great it, it had fought at the battle of trafalgar and That's all that right. had its great days mm. and i think he just saw this coming up the thames and thought he'd paint it it's going to the scrapyard basically yeah. Yeah, it's an amazing moment. It's an yeah. elegiac moment. Yes. Um, and the, the ships become things which convey human emotions and also, yeah. I suppose, also Turner's ideas, perhaps, of, yeah. of, of you know, regret um, for the lost be, world. Yes. 
you can see really, I mean, like very back on uh, the horizon there is a ship in full sail, mm. which he obviously saw was it was painterly, it was a beautiful, it was a powerful, strong image. And in the front, this rather noisy, you feel it kind of noisy, belching fumes of the modern steam tongue. Mm. So it's a bit like his paintings, with the other one in the gallery, with the train going across the viaduct to Maidenhead. Yes. You know, very lyrical Arcadian landscape with this train spitting <laughs> sort of smuts and smoke and, and, and coal fumes out. So yes, it's, it's the changeover mm. from, from, you know, sail to, to steam. Mm. And, but I think it's also, he's just, the, the background, the sky, the sunset is, is so moving. That's really, really powerful, that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's, a, it's an incredibly powerful painting and actually, yeah. I mean, actually in, in very many different ways, a lot of the pictures that you've chosen this evening are very, very powerful because they show how artists can take the world around them yeah. and change them into something rich and strange and that, you know, it really, it really transcends, I suppose, the time of their, of their mortality. Yeah. Um, it's an amazing conversation we can have with objects made by artists mm. who are long dead, but yet we feel as yes. if they were made just yesterday. I think that's the thing about a good painting. It makes you think differently <clears throat> after you've seen it, you know? Mm. It just changes your mind about something mm. or it puts some other alternative in your mind. So it's a, it, a, you know, it, it's a transactional thing. It's not just mm. looking at a painting and saying, that's a nice colour. It's got to do something more, which is what I... I mean, I think you're right. I think in these, there's always something there which makes you think and makes you feel differently about the world from the way you did before you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, Michael, that's a wonderful point um, on okay. which to end. Thank you all very much for coming this evening, yes. but particularly thank you, Michael, for sharing pleasure. with us your it's thoughts on paintings. It's, really it's been, nice it's been a great pleasure for us. <laughs>